Bell brought its 525 helicopter to the recent Verticon show in Dallas, Texas. The fly-by-wire mid-sized twin rotorcraft, which is aimed primarily at the oil and gas market, has had its certification date slide several times over the past few years. But the finish line could be in sight. We'll share a quick update on the program and also talk in depth with Bell's lead 525 pilot from the Bell Training Academy. First, what does the 525 offer to the market that current helicopters don't? So the Bell 525 provides a fly-by-wire control system which uh, enables the pilot to have great situational awareness, reduce pilot workload so that the pilot can focus on the mission at hand. Uh, whether it be a normal mission or if they've got to deal with an emergency situation, they're not heads down in the cockpit working the controls of the systems. The aircraft is, is helping uh, facilitate the, the pilot to make fantastic conditions and keep everyone safe as they execute their mission. Additionally, the 525 is a different concept from other aircraft of this type. It's more of an airliner experience for the customers in the back, the passengers. It's more comfortable, it's quieter, uh, less vibration. So we believe that for these long deep water missions, it will provide definite benefits to our, our customers, both the pilots flying the aircraft and then the passengers in the back. The company says it has completed more than 60 certification deliverables with the FAA, as well as many critical type inspection authorization flight tests. We are very close to certification. Uh, we're in the final stages of the uh, prerequisites before we get into function and reliability uh, flight testing with the FAA. Uh, what we have left is a couple of laboratory tests uh, that we're gonna work through during uh, the next few months, and then you'll see the aircraft begin its FNR flight campaign. In parallel with completing the type cert activities, we are undergoing additional expansion of the aircraft. We've got cold weather expansion testing that's been happening. We've got icing, full icing protection systems which are being tested. Uh, so the aircraft uh, is going to continue to have additional capabilities after its initial type cert, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're gonna continue to invest in this, this platform for years to come. We climbed into the 525, and AIN's editor-in-chief, Matt Thurber, got a chance to speak with Dave Bone, 525 training lead at the Bell Training Academy. Okay, Matt, what do you got? What did you have to do to get ready to fly the 525? Do you have to have a type rating for this, or how does, how does it work? The aircraft is certified under Part 29. It's over 12,500 pounds, so by FAA regulations, you do need a type rating. That's part of my job is developing that training curriculum for uh, potential operators and owners. Okay, so, well, the training curriculum, you're gonna have to go to the Bell Training Academy for the training? Initially, it'll be at the Bell Training Academy in Fort Worth. Uh, we are exploring options for European and other international venues for training. And will there be a simulator component to the training? All of the training will be done in the simulator. Uh, for EASA, there's a requirement for experience in the aircraft prior to your practical test. So we will have both in our European and Fort Worth training facilities, we'll, have, we'll be able to support EASA training with an aircraft on site. But most of the training for the FAA, all of the training, and for EASA, most of the training will be in the simulator. And that's a full motion level D? Full motion level D, six degrees of motion that's right now built by our true partner uh, in Fort Worth. Uh, international options are to be determined. So what were you flying before you started flying the 525? Uh, at the Bell Training Academy, I am rated to instruct in the 206, 407, and 429. Because of my military background flying uh, heavier medium lift aircraft, it was a natural transition to the Bell 525 because it's a 20,500 pound aircraft. With our envelope expansion, we're going to bring the max gross weight up to 21,050 pounds within the next, uh, within the foreseeable future. We'll have a envelope expansion to uh, greater gross weight. So was this your first experience with helicopter fly-by-wire or? This is, this is everyone's first experience with commercial fly-by-wire. Uh, but fly-by-wire technology is nothing new. Uh, the Concorde was a analog fly-by-wire airliners, uh, Boeing, Airbus, uh, private jets, 
are all, and military has all been doing fly-by-wire for years. The difference on this is it's the first commercial fly-by-wire helicopter. Uh, now the design philosophy, the flight control philosophy on this aircraft is such that the aircraft will never do anything that the pilot can't override. At no point will the aircraft turn or climb or increase power that the pilot can't come on the controls and correct that action. If the flight director says turn left and the pilot says there's an obstacle I need to turn right, the pilot will always be able to override the flight, con the flight control system and take appropriate action. This fly bar wire really, you don't talk about a four axis autopilot because it's kind of built into the whole system, right? From the backbone of the aircraft, the fly-by-wire is built in that it controls all four axes. The flight control system has three separate, is a triple redundant system with three flight control computers and three hydraulic systems. Each of those, a flight control computer and a hydraulic system makes one channel of flight control. That goes to the main rotor and the tail rotor. And the flight control system from its baseline default settings has flight control decoupling. So the, the flight control computer takes into account an increase in power to provide the appropriate anti-torque indications. As you transition to forward flight, it takes into account translating tendency and makes those corrections, not as a higher function, but as the baseline flight control modes. On top of that is what you would consider the, the traditional flight director, which is hands off, feet flat on the floor, using the Garmin system to navigate, maintain altitude, or turn, climb as required. But the base mode, the basic default FCS includes a hover mode, a ground speed mode, and a flight mode. Once you transition sufficiently in airspeed, It'll transition between those modes, and those are what would be the equivalent of a traditional trim and attitude mode for the aircraft. And that's the default setting. There's also envelope protection features as well. There are envelope protection. So for instance, for your power, for your collective, as you approach a power limit, either max continuous or takeoff power, the flight control system will have the trim motors drive the collective down, not against the pilot's desire, but just enough that the pilot realizes you've hit the, the limit. I like to say it's like a flight instructor gently putting their hand on the collective and saying, hey, you're at your takeoff power limit. Are you sure you want to pull more? It's three pounds. It's about three pounds. You can easily pull through it if you need it. If you are about to impact the terrain, it's not going to stop you from over torquing the transmission or over temping the engine. It's just a gentle reminder that you're at the limit. Uh, as you're the terrain awareness, you'll get an oral and visual indication, but the aircraft will not pitch up uncontrolled to avoid terrain. It goes back to our basic design philosophy of the pilot is always in charge. The pilot will need to make those inputs. The, the aircraft will not turn due to a traffic call, but you will get oral and visual indications that there's traffic and you need to take some action, which is a safety feature because uncommanded control inputs can be disorienting if the aircraft suddenly pitches up or turns and the pilot wasn't expecting it. So for a fly-by-wire helicopter, how do you describe its handling? Crisp and predictable. It really is easy. Once you understand what the flight control system is doing for you and what it is not doing for you, it's easier to fly. And that's part of our reduce the workload, allow the pilot to increase his situational awareness because he doesn't have to worry about, is the ball centered? Where am I on my power spectrum? Those functions are provided to the pilot, either through tactile feedback or automation, and allows the pilot to focus outside the aircraft. 
uh, an example would be coming out of it, taking off from a confined area or in reduced visual cueing. Pull power, instead of focusing on the power indicator of how close am I to having a exceedance, the aircraft tells me you've hit the limit. You can feel it. You can feel it. Set max continuous power. And while that's happening, the pilot is looking out at obstacles, traffic, and safety and flying the aircraft instead of staring down at his, situ his power situation indicator, wondering, am I gonna have an exceedance on this engine? Increases the situational awareness, brings the pilot's eyes outside instead of focusing inside. And we believe that's gonna increase safety. Again, by reducing pilot workload, increasing his situational awareness and thereby increasing safety. So can you talk a little bit about the cyclic control? Because obviously it's not a typical on the floor stick. Moving to the side stick controllers, I will be honest, it takes a little bit of getting used to, especially for experienced pilots. But once you get used to it, which generally takes about an hour of flying in the simulator, it's very relaxing and it allows your posture to be more relaxed sitting up straight in the chair instead of hunching over, shoulders curled to hold the controls. It allows you to sit up, hold the sticks in a comfortable position, adjust the armrests, adjust the seat to the most comfortable position. And it's like sitting in a comfortable chair in your living room, as opposed to sitting on a park bench with a broomstick between your legs. Do you get the same feedback in the cyclic stick that you would on the... On the there is, collective? the flight control has an, the flight control system has an artificial feel built into it, but what you don't get is the transmission of vibration into the flight controls because there is no physical connection between the flight controls and the control surfaces. You don't get that vibration transmitting through those physical linkages. There is artificial feel, but not that you would be, not the traditional feel that you would expect from a traditional physical flight controls. So your personal preference is you've got both physical buttons on the avionics or you've got the touchscreen controllers. Which one do you like better? Does it depend on the circumstance? So. The only thing that is in this aircraft is that's physical is the Garmin mode controller, which is your flight director, the landing gear, internal lights, engines, and electrical. Things that if you, obviously, if you don't have electrical power on the aircraft, you can't turn on the Garmin touch controller and those electronic functions. So the engines, physical linkages, everything else is under the glass. The exterior lights are buttons under the glass. That's one less switch overhead for position and anti-collision lights. The circuit breakers, as you look around the cockpit, there are no physical circuit breakers accessible. They're all done under the Garmin glass. And we can pull up circuit breakers and interact with them digitally instead of physically. The anti-ice system, one less switch to turn on the pedostatic system. It's under the glass. The anti-icing to bring up the cameras. All of those controls are done under the glass, which makes for a much cleaner crew compartment. I know where I'm looking for everything. It's on the Garmin touch controller. It's not behind the other pilot. It's not overhead or behind my seat or on the forward panel or the center panel. Everything is under the glass. I know that is my one-stop shop for interacting with systems, aside from turning my generators off and turning my engines on and off. Everything else is under the glass. Just in terms of flying the aircraft, is it fun? Do you like it? The workload is much, is much less than traditional aircraft. Flight, a flight director is a flight director. The part about this helicopter that makes it stand out is the comfort sitting in the cockpit. Once you get coupled up on the flight director, 
it's relaxing. The, the seats are comfortable. The ergodynamics of the crew compartment make for an, a comfortable and non-taxing flight for the pilots. Uh, you've flown with other pilots in this and are probably trained some other pilots. Are they picking it up fairly quickly and appreciating the, the benefits of the flight control system? That is one of the focuses of our training is the transition from flying traditional helicopters to the fly-by-wire and the benefits that the fly-by-wire give. You have to overcome the primacy that if someone has 10,000 hours flying another aircraft, it is a transition. Some of the most successful training that I've had was with low time pilots in simple aircraft. They come on board and immediately transition to, I understand what's going on or what the flight controls are doing for me. We will focus in the training to make sure that we stress those differences from conventional helicopters, because we all know what you learned first and what you have the most experience with is the hardest habits to break. But once you accept it and you understand what the aircraft is doing for you, it becomes remarkably easy to operate. And then you've probably flown this at different weights and up to max takeoff weight. How does it perform when it's heavy? It performs like a helicopter. You don't notice much difference, it flies like it flies. It flies like it flies, it flies like a heavily loaded helicopter. You require more torque to more engine to hover but as far as the flight controls it's no more challenging at heavier weights now there are obvious limitations coming into land you have to maintain power on the aircraft just like you would in a, in a typical helicopter it's not that different uh for mission planning and takeoff and landing the real difference is the en route portion when things are routine and tiring. This aircraft takes care of a lot of those functions automatically and allows the pilot to relax is a bad word, uh, to focus on the navigation and not be uncomfortable and squirming in his squirming in their seat because the seats aren't comfortable and distracted thinking about how soon can we land. It's a much easier, it's a much easier ride for the pilots and for the, for the passengers, the same thing. It's a very smooth platform. It's very quiet. It's not a taxing ride with, uh, I had a gentleman in earlier said, is it the type of helicopter that shakes the fillings out of your teeth? It is not that type of aircraft. The, the vibrations from the transmission are absorbed through liquid inertial vibration elimination mounts. So there's no hard mount to the airframe. A lot of that vibration is absorbed in the connection between the main gearbox and the airframe, making for a very smooth ride. Last question, are you excited to train more pilots and, and fairly soon get them out there in the field flying this thing? I'm excited about bringing this aircraft to market and letting the world see it. When I was given the opportunity to come here and espouse the virtues of the 525, I jumped on it because everyone that I have instructed and taught this aircraft, introduced to this aircraft, walked out saying, when can I get one?